Booties for Black Girl Nerds. So, with a sequel, what's the process like for you, especially with already established characters and landscapes and whatnot? Well, I suppose with the characters, you feel like you come back home again. Mm -hmm. um, and even we're, we're even in Arendelle for a little bit of Act One at mm -hmm. the beginning. But uh, so you're grounded a bit, and that's wonderful and familiar. Uh, but then you go into uncharted territory <laughs> after that. You know, so it's, it gets pretty challenging after that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was nice to be able to, to uh, sort of feel that familiar place, that familiar story, mm -hmm. our familiar characters, and kind of, kind of get into that world. And then you're on the journey with them because you've kind of bonded again with them. Yeah, yeah. So I, I noticed in some of the footage, like, I mean, you have the elements, water, fire, earth, wind, what, like, how is it with lighting? I'm so fascinated with lighting and the different elements it takes to, to even light correctly and well, how does that work exactly? Well, we start, okay, we have a script mm -hmm. and we go through the script with the directors and we, what we try to do is find out what, what does the director want the audience to feel at any given point in time that's narratively telling the story. Mm -hmm. And then we break that down into what we call a color script. And that color script will describe every aspect of the film from beginning to end. That then goes into lighting mm -hmm. and that helps the lighters describe sort of the big broad strokes and then they bring their expertise forward when it comes to um, specific ways that the light is behaving within that space. Because, I mean, it's beautiful. So. Thank you. Yeah, we, we think it's pretty. <laughs> yeah. So, you're, so uh, you're always subserving it to yeah. the narrative. That, always. That's our job, is yep. to okay. really support that narrative, whatever it asks for. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, I have to say, on this show, which was a little different than Frozen 1, um, early on, uh, as the script was being written by Jennifer Lee, mm -hmm. our co-director, um, Lisa had done some artwork. Uh, uh, that had spoken to the directors in a particular way that influenced the writing. Okay. You know, so there was a little bit of visual back and forth where some of the visuals actually helped um, the writer. And, and likewise, you know, you mentioned the four elements yeah. of, of nature. Uh, uh, those were sort of kicking around. They weren't a direct theme in the, in the narrative at the beginning at okay. all. Um, we knew elements of nature were going to play a role, and um, uh, we, we had, I had asked our producer uh, if we could visually showcase them in a way, and at one point he said, well, the directors aren't quite ready for that yet. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we found a moment uh, uh, of leveraging uh, a way to showcase them early on in the film. It was just a moment mm -hmm. um, with the mother uh, uh, and, and the two girls are very young, and uh, I asked them, "Can I leverage the elements in this with this particular moment and, and on this particular item?" And they said, "Yes." So that was the opening for mm -hmm. describing the visual right. um, for icons of nature, okay. and and then it just grew from it there. It did. It grew. Yeah. It really grew. So even from a little kernel, and which started out visually, then that inspired Jen. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, and scripts, when we first get them, mm -hmm. you know that there's going to be a whole lot of changes. From the beginning, when you start on a film, all the way to the end, you're, you're kind of working alongside of the story as they move and migrate and, right. and refine and hone in. We have to do the same thing. So all this artwork that we've created up here, either helps support it or falls away as the story becomes more solidified. And I know, I remember from earlier the use of, you know, the real Scandinavian locations that were used for like the forest and whatnot. I, I wonder, was there an element that you worked on that you were just thrilled that it came out a little better than you yeah. thought it would? Yes, <laughs> absolutely, but we can't talk about it yet. <laughs> I know. You have to wait. You have to go see it. <laughs> yes, there, there are, even for us, there are yep. many, many surprises along yep. the way. Yep. Okay. Okay. And that and that's fun for us too when yes. things become better than we even imagined. Yeah. So, is there 
an advancement in technology that, that has really helped you um, in what you do for the animation process? Well, there were, there were two things for me. Um, the first one was the, the, the trees being able to get all the different colors in the, in the foliage, which we had not been able to do up to a certain point. Okay. And Hyperion and lighting, which was a little bit new for me, um, is a more uh, realistic uh, setup. Um, where th it's not sculpted so much by pieces, but th you have a light setup that, that describes real world uh, space. And, and that's why I was saying we can only target a an idea as close as possible, and then once the lighters get it, they have to take it to that next place. So our job is, uh, when Lisa men mentioned this Hyperion lighting, yeah. um, which is, uh, for this studio, we create our own software here, so it was a great uh, technological breakthrough. Yeah. Uh, but then it's our job, and particularly in the frozen world, and Lisa's really great with this too, is you take something that has sort of um, naturalistic lighting conditions, and then it's our job to make it romantic. Yeah, that's okay. a really good word. Romantic. Yeah, no. because there, there's a bit of theater in our in our world, yes. and it's you know like you would go to a theater and see it lit up the way it would be lit in a theater setting right. on Broadway or whatever. And that we we really do take that to heart yeah. and embrace yeah. that. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.